Of course, we had to make a plan uh, against this team. We knew we knew that the strength it's the the speed of the Musa and uh, I have a problem always with his name, the right winger. Okay, and we knew that sometimes they play very direct, especially when they find the space behind us. We try to close the space uh, on the side, and we work a lot of, of, on the things. And we try also to put pressure on the, on the, on the midfielders, and uh, Sofian Figuli and Den Gidjura and Ismail Benazza, they made a great game in the things. In the semi-final of the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations between Algeria and Nigeria, Algeria coach Jamal Belmadi employed a defensive scheme to nullify the threat of Nigeria's wingers, Ahmed Moussa and Samuel Chakwezi. So as you see, what Algeria is going to do is they're going to line up in a sort of defensive shell, whether it be a 4-3-3 or a 4-1-4-1, whatever you want to call it. And in this shell, for most passages of play, the lone striker, Baghdad Bounajah, is not actually going to pressure Nigeria's center halves. What's also interesting is that the two wingers, Yusuf Bileli and Riyad Mahrez, take up a very interesting and particular role. Both wingers are going to try to tuck in and deny access to Nigeria's most two dangerous players. They do this by playing in the passing lanes. So time and time again, what Algeria's wingers will do is they're going to encourage passes to the Nigerian fullbacks by blocking direct access to the wingers. So in his first clip, Mahrez starts off in the passing lane, forcing the ball to the fullback. And from there, the entry pass becomes much, much more difficult when trying to get the ball to the wing, because as you're going to see, the Algerian fullback is right on Ahmed Musa's back. In this next sequence, you're going to see that Mahrez starts off in the same tight, tucked in position, again forcing the ball to the fullback. This time, Ahmed Musa actually tucked in and is in the center of the pitch instead of hugging the touchline in order to try and find some space. And effectively, that's nullifying the danger when Jamal bin Mahdi said he didn't want their most dangerous players on the wings. Here you have the Nigerian center half Omaruo again forcing the ball to the fullback because Real Mahrez was covering pinched in covering Alexi Wobi and the winger. He stopped the angle forcing a pass back and Nigeria's going to try the exact same thing on the other side and it's going to be snuffed out by Algeria's fullback Rami Ben Sabaini. Here's another play where you have the Nigerian center half Kenneth Omaruo on the ball with a lot of time and space and you're going to see Mahrez once again forcing the ball to the fullback and from there he can close down. Time and time again you're going to see this. this now it's Bileli. He's playing the passing lane, Mahrez also playing the passing lane. Algeria's in this shell formation where they force the ball wide, but they force it wide in non-dangerous areas. And one last one, this time it's Bileli on the right side, and it's just an unforced error. Now another option Nigeria have is if they don't want to play the ball to the fullback, they can actually try to force it through midfield. However, because things are so congested, Algeria were banking on the Nigerian midfield to not have the technical competence or the reactivity really to adjust and play those balls through the middle. Uh, these are just a few sequences here where Nigeria tries to force the ball through the middle, but uh, Algeria's three midfielders do a fantastic job of pressing and making sure they cough up the ball. And so as the match went on and Nigeria's frustration began to build, central defenders actually tried to play the long ball, which makes things very, very difficult. Look here, you have Kenneth Omaruo trying to whip it into Alex Iwobi. That's not going to work. Truste Kong going to Omaruo. To Truste Kong, who's going to try a long diagonal. But Mares is in the passing lane and the fullbacks are ready. Once again, Mahrez is starting in a very narrow position, forcing the ball to the fullback. This time, Jamilu Collins passes it back to Omaruo, who's going to try a long pass. But you see that long pass, it's very difficult if you're Ahmed Musa with a defender on your back to try and control that long pass. And it was just a frustrating day overall for Nigeria center half's passing. So sometimes Algeria were cut out. For example, when Nigeria counterattacked, uh, here you have the ball getting to Chakwezi, who does a fantastic job of holding it up, uh, swinging the ball around. And now you have a one-on-one -on -one situation. These things can happen when Algeria do not start within their shell. And now it's Ahmed Musa against Mehdi Zafan. But Bamadi explained that when this situation happens, he wants either his defensive midfielder, Adlan Gidiora, or the winger, Riyad Mahrez or Yusuf Bilali, to come down and double. 
They do not want the isolated situation of a 1v1 between Ahmed Musa and Mehdi Zafan. Here, William Trusikong does a, a good job of feeding the ball to Wobi between the lines who gets the ball very quickly to Chukwezi. And you have one-on-one -on -one situation. And here you see Yusuf Bilaili coming in for the double team to help his fullback out. Here, the Algerian national team start in their shell. And what ended up happening is Ahmed Musa actually got quite frustrated as you can see in this clip and he starts moving central to find space. Uh, he starts drifting and as a result when Nigeria do get the ball on the flank at times he wasn't there. And in this clip you can see Bilmadi so happy with how Algeria closed out at the fullbacks. You can hear him on the, on the live broadcast uh, encouraging his players. Here Musa drifted all the way down to the right side. And uh, Algerian, uh, the Algerian midfield, Adlan Gidjour, again, does a good job of tackling. The same thing happens over here where it's a, just a good counter attack. So Algeria not starting within their shell. And he will be once again, does a good job of getting the ball out to uh, Henry and Yekaru. And this is just a one-on-one -on -one situation. This does happen and it did happen, but it happened in very limited occasions and on a very limited basis due to Jamal Blumari's defensive scheme.